In this video, I'm going to create a simple puzzle game in Unreal Engine in order to introduce how to do C++ bindings. So I'll assume you've done some work in Unreal Engine before, and that you've done a little bit of text-based programming, but that you've never integrated these two things together before. Uh, I already have uh, Unreal Engine installed and configured. I have Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition configured. Um, and there's a, there's a page on the Unreal Engine wiki that describes how to get these two things talking to each other well. There's a little bit of configuration required here, or recommended here. Um, I'll, I'll provide a link in the video description so you can check that out. Uh, for my context here, I'm going to create a, a simple sequence puzzle, like the classic Simon game, where you just have to mimic out the sequence. So, to get started, I want to create an actor that represents the puzzle itself, uh, so that I could you know, essentially uh, drag and drop it into the scene. So, let's go ahead and get started with that. I'll make a new C++ class. It will be an actor subclass. And we'll call it sequence puzzle. All these defaults are fine. What this will do is generate a stub implementation. Uh, and then, as you can see, invoke the compiler to get everything into a, a stable state. So we'll just have to wait for that to finish. All right. So, hop back over to Visual Studio, and we can see what it generated for us. There are two files. There's the CPP file and the .h file. This is called the header file. The header file gives us all of the declarations. It tells us that we're making a class called Sequence Puzzle. Uh, notice uh, it has prefixed the name with an A, A for actor. Uh, we see that again here in the superclass actor. Um, you can see several of these uh, macros and screaming caps here, these are all macros, and that's really what handles the, the integration of this code with the whole uh, Unreal system. Um, here's a declaration of a constructor, and then we have two uh, overridden methods. These are overridden from the superclass. Uh, so again, this .h file, this contains all of our declarations, um, but not the implementations. The implementations exist in the CPP file. Uh, and if, you're, if you're not familiar with this kind of a build system, this allows us to build our implementation separately and, and modularly. Um, and by, by keeping these things separated, we can have uh, faster compile times. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, uh, this, oftentimes this is my first step when I get in here, is uh, I see that the constructor is setting this up so that the puzzle will receive and process tick events, um, but in fact we don't need that. So I can set that to false. Of course we want to prevent a comment rot here, so let's change that and say um, disable tick events. And then really we don't need to override this method at all, so I'll just eliminate it. But if we eliminate it here, we have to also eliminate it from here. Good. Uh, so anytime we make that kind of change, we can recompile our solution, and I like to do that from Unreal Engine itself, um, from the editor here, and the reason for that is primarily that I find the handling of error messages to work a bit better here, um, and I'm sure at some point I'll generate some error messages so you can see how that looks. All right, good. Uh, so we have a, a sequence puzzle implementation. It doesn't do a whole lot. Um, my architecture here will be that I'm going to keep some of my logic in C++ and I'm going to keep my gameplay and visual elements in blueprints. Um, really, I could do this whole thing in blueprints, I could do this whole thing in C++, and so the distinction is maybe somewhat arbitrary, but I think this approach is is rather conventional. Um, but keep in mind there's, there's no one right way to do this. I'm just demonstrating a way that I have found to be fruitful in, in my experimentation. Um, so what I want to do now is take this essentially a model level class, right, a logical class, and make a new blueprint subclass of it. And easy way to do that is I can just right click and say create blueprint class based on this. And I'm going to call the uh, blueprint one uh, BP sequence puzzle. That seems to be a pretty common convention too when you read a lot of Unreal code. All right, so there is a sequence puzzle. Um, now we're looking at the content view, right, just to clarify, we've got our regular content folder if you're used to working with blueprints, and then there's this separate place over here where we can see our C++ classes. Um, but this is enough that I can drag and drop this into my scene, and uh, I could run the game, and uh, well, we don't see anything, right, because there's no geometry attached to it. But it's there, so um, 
by the way, if I didn't say this before, this is just a, a blank code project, right? So it's it's very much like a blank blueprints project. There's, there's really not, not much in it. I'm using the default pawn to fly around. Um, okay, so uh, let's actually make the puzzle have some buttons on it. And, you know, I'll start with just a single button. And I want to use this uh, the same approach. I'm going to make a model level class in C++ and then make a subclass of it in blueprints. So let me go back over here and make a new C++ class and this will also be an actor and we'll call this a sequence puzzle button and once again this is going to generate for us a stub implementation uh, and invoke the compiler just enough time for a sip of coffee maybe two sips of coffee all right. Uh, so here we're looking at sequence puzzle button CPP sequence puzzle button dot H, and once again I'm going to get rid of the tick methods because I, I just don't need them. There we are. Good, and I'll go ahead and just uh, hit compile there while I talk about what I'm doing. Um, Actually, while that's compiling, I think I can go ahead and create a, the blueprint class. And we'll call this BP. Good. Uh, now, the button has actual geometry. So I'm going to find a plane, and I'll stick that in here. Just call it plane for now. That's fine. And uh, in order to see it conveniently, let me um, rotate this geometry. Oops. There rotate it sort of towards where my camera will be. Good. All right, so, you know, from here, I could always just uh, grab that and plop it in this, the world and make sure it shows up there. But there it is. Good. Um, but what I, whoops, what I really want to do here is make my C++ code spawn the button. Eventually, it'll spawn four buttons, but I, I need to start somewhere. So we'll start by making it spawn a single button. So let's hop over here and see how we can do that. Now there's an interesting uh, integration issue that happens here. Um, it would not be enough for my sequence puzzle to simply instantiate sequence puzzle button because what I need to instantiate is the blueprint subclass of this, right? BP sequence puzzle button. So let's see how we can do that. What I'll do here is add a new uh, field, a new property, which will be the actual runtime class of the button. So here's some magic. We'll say u property edit defaults only t subclass of um, a sequence puzzle button. All right, let me explain what some of these pieces are. So I'm saying that the uh, variable button class has a type which is a subclass of sequence puzzle button. Right now, sequence puzzle button is not currently defined here. Right, we don't know what it is. You know, if you're a, a say a Java programmer, you could say we haven't imported this. So one option would certainly be that we could include the .h file over here, and then sequence puzzle button would be aware of sorry sequence puzzle would be aware of sequence puzzle button. Um, but that also introduces a compiler dependency, so that if anything we include, if it changes, well then we have to change this one too. Um, and that sort of takes away the benefit of having this modular compilation idea that we only have to compile the bits that changed. So here's a, a nice trick here. We can say uh, there's a class called sequence puzzle button. This is, uh, I believe that's called a forward declaration. So we're saying to the compiler, this thing exists um, but at this point, we don't really care what it is because we're not calling any methods on it. We're not accessing any fields from it. We just have to know that, yes, this, this is really a thing. Um, and so that makes the compiler happy here with this reference. Um, U property is a macro that tells us that this field, the following field, is going to be accessible to the uh, Unreal Engine subsystem outside of C++, so, you know, in the editor. Um, Edit defaults only tells us that we can modify this in the class defaults, um, but not on individual instances. So again, we'll see that in action in just a minute. For now, let's hop over to sequence puzzle. And again, let's look at the constructor and begin play. 
So the constructor creates for us the class default object. Um, if you've done some work with blueprints, you know that in Unreal Engine you can set uh, default values on a blueprint before that blueprint is ever spawned. Um, and if you have some understanding of how uh, program execution works, you might have wondered, well, how does that really work? Well, it works because we create these class default objects from which we can sort of stamp out each individual uh, instance um, when they get spawned. So this begin play, uh, this is what gets called on each individual instance, whereas the constructor is setting up these defaults that are sort of held by all instances. So uh, what I want to do here is then in, in begin play, I want to spawn the button class. So uh, in order to do that, I need a reference to the world. And within Unreal Engine, let's uh, type u world, world. And uh, conveniently, we um, inherit a method called get world, which gets us reference to uh, the world in which this puzzle is a part. Um, I remember the star means that we're dealing with pointers. And uh, this u here is another prefix that tells us this is a an Unreal uh, object. Um, you know, it's, it serves a similar purpose to the, the A that tells us this is an Unreal Actor. A best practice here is to make sure that we don't have null there for the world, although, you know, if we have a null world, we have probably bigger problems. Um, so what I need to do here is spawn the actual button. So let's say world spawn actor, and this is uh, takes a template, which will be the sequence, oops, puzzle button. Uh, so this tells us uh, a type that we'll be using to spawn, um, but also we have to give that button class, which is going to be reference to the blueprint. We'll, we'll see that once it all comes together. Uh, in order to spawn an actor, I have to tell it where to spawn, and what I'm going to do is just send this actors, right, the sequence puzzles, transform to the spawn method so that this new object, the sequence puzzle button we create, will be at the same position. It'll have the same transform. Um, so let's see, that looks pretty good. Um, at this level, in the C++ file, uh, we really sort of need to know what this is. Let's go ahead and put our include up here. Say we'll include a sequence puzzle button.h. Good. Um, now, I haven't said this before, but you probably noticed there's a lot of red squigglies here. <laughs> um, you have to learn to just sort of ignore those because uh, Visual Studio just can't handle the all of the code in Unreal Engine to be able to give us good um, edit time feedback on what our errors are. Uh, so yeah, you know, if you're not used to that, you're probably throwing your hands up in panic, but I'm not worried about it because you just sort of get used to looking past it. Because, you know, what we have to do is hop back over here and tap that compile button, and then we'll find out if everything worked or not. All right, compile completed, that's good. So if we did everything right, then when we create a sequence puzzle, it should be spawning up a button. So let's drop one of those into the world and play the game. Uh, oh. You know, I haven't actually set the button class, right? This is this piece that I said we were going to see that's interesting that we never actually did. So uh, button class there um, is probably null, and so nothing interesting is happening. Uh, what we need to do is go into the sequence puzzle, and we need to find its um, class defaults. Here we are. Sequence puzzle, button class, none. I need to tell it. What we really have here is sequence puzzle button. Notice that it gives us only the options that the compiler would be happy with because we said this has to be a subclass of sequence puzzle. So there we are, that's what we need. All right, compile that, save that, hop back to our level, um, and play. There it is. We have a, a puzzle uh, with a single button. You know, it's not interactive, it just kind of sits there. Um, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, let's just clean this up a little bit now by fixing the the camera uh, so that we're looking right at that. Um, so the way I like to do, do that is let's just set this to the origin and let's get rid of the floor. We don't need the floor. Um, we'll add in a new camera. And again, I'll just stick that at the origin for now too. And then let's pull it out along the y-axis and rotate it. Oops, there we are, rotate it to look toward our puzzle. All right, that looks right. Um, we don't need the spawn point. 
Oops, play start. We don't need that. Um, all right, we're going to need to make sure that this camera gets set as the uh, the camera we want to look through. So we'll go to blueprints and in begin play, we can set view target with blend. When we play, we'll set it to this target on the default player controller. Good. Oops, and uh, we'll save this level. This will be called default level. That's fine. All right. That looks good. Um, play. Good. Uh, so we are looking at the puzzle, and that all looks good. Um, what should we handle next? Uh, let me take a little break there, and uh, I'll come back.